Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. There's an investigation underway in Kego Harbor after a fire at a popular restaurant. Thank you for joining us for Local 4 News at Noon. I'm Everard Casimi. Firefighters were able to put the fire out, but there is plenty of damage to the building. It happened overnight at Gino's Pizzeria on Cass Lake Road, right near Orchard Lake. We're told the family-owned restaurant dates back to the 1960s in the community. Local Force Kim DiGiulio talked to the owners to see what's next for this establishment. Thanks to a person who was driving by Gino's Pizzeria and Restaurant early this morning, this restaurant is going to be okay. They saw smoke coming from the building. That's when they called 911. The fire started early this morning in the main entrance of this restaurant that opened in 1969. Actually, that end that's on fire right now, that used to be the original building uh, for the carryout pizzeria was right there. Thankfully, it was contained to just that area not affecting the rest of the building or the banquet center next door. Irene and Gino Santillo are siblings who run this family business. They were looking forward to a big weekend of business after a road closure was keeping people from passing by their restaurant for the past three weeks. They just opened it up last night. At four o'clock we got the call that they opened it back up and it was kind of like, wow, great. You know, it's gonna be beautiful tomorrow. We're gonna be busy. We'll open up the patio and of course, I get the call 5 o'clock this morning, the restaurant's on fire. However, this family has been through a lot over the decades with a strong clientele and loyal workers, some of which who have worked here for more than 40 years. Irene and Gino say they will get through this and get back to normal for their customers. We just keep plucking away. We don't know any different. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably it. We don't know any different. There were several events scheduled to take place here this weekend. Unfortunately, they will all need to be canceled. The good news is that there was a wedding scheduled for tomorrow, and that was scheduled for the banquet center. Now, there's a kitchen in the banquet center, so that wedding can still happen. Reporting in Kego Harbor, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. All right, Kim, thank you. New at noon here, fire crews are investigating a house fire in Southfield. This is video from Sky 4. It shows multiple crews on the scene there, and we're told the fire started inside of a home on Circle Drive. It appears the fire tore through parts of the roof. However, it's not clear if anybody involved was hurt. So, of course, we're going to keep you updated as we get more information. Well, one thing we have a lot of information about is the forecast. If you got a chance to step outside at all today, Paul, 77 degrees, it is certainly feeling like the 81 there in Howell and, and beyond. Well, uh, we've been saying it all week long, like Mort Krim used to say, man, we just go straight from winter to summer. There were like was was no spring. What a cool April we had with all that rain. Well, right now with blue, beautiful blue sky, 77 at Metro, 81 in Howell, 77 Pontiac, 79 in Adrian. The wind is generally under 10 miles per hour. It's just a fantastic day out there. Nothing to show you on satellite or radar. There's really not a lot going on. So whether you're going fishing or hitting the beach or just uh, going out for a bike ride, play a little tennis this afternoon, it's going to be lots of sunshine. Looks like low 80s for the high. And if you are going to the Tiger game tonight, I know the team's not doing very well right now, but you know what? There's nothing better than going down to the ballpark, watching those Tigers on a beautiful summer-like evening. And we're going to start the game in the uh, upper 70s, and then by the end of the game, dropping into the upper 60s. Light wind looking just great. All right, the weekend does offer thunderstorm chances. You need to know the timing, and I'll be back with timing details coming up in just a few. Everod? Paul, thank you. Two men are hurt after a shooting on Detroit's east side. It happened around 3 o'clock this morning inside of a home on Lumpkin Street right near Nevada Avenue. Police say two men, one in his 50s and one in his 70s, were taken to the hospital. Right now, police say that both of those men are in critical condition. Investigators are still working to determine exactly what happened here. They're trying to talk to the victims at the hospital to get some type of understanding to why this may have occurred. And right now, I think both victims are in surgery, so they haven't spoken to them as of yet. Investigators tell us that a great car left the scene, but it's not clear if the shooting was a drive by or not. State police are investigating two reported freeway shootings. This happened around five Thursday night in the eastbound lanes of 696 near to Quinder. The man was able to drive himself to the hospital in the area and we're waiting on an update on his condition. The second shooting happened around 1050 on 696 near Cousins Avenue and police believe that road rage led to a driver actually pulling out a gun and opening fire, hitting the victim's window. Police are still looking for a white older model minivan.
In other news this afternoon, the CDC is making mask recommendations as COVID-19 cases continue to climb back up here in Michigan. Uh, take a look at this map from what shows Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, Livingston and St. Clair counties with a high level of community transmission. That means that there's a greater risk of catching the virus. The CDC recommends that everybody wear masks indoors when in the public and even while taking public transportation. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan and Police Chief James White are set to meet with President Biden today at the White House. Both will be joined by other officials to discuss how Detroit has benefited from the $50 million appropriated through the American Rescue Plan that was aimed at reducing gun violence. And now we want to turn to the war in Ukraine. The first war crimes case of the war opened in a Kiev court today with a Russian soldier on trial accused of killing an unarmed Ukrainian civilian. This as Russian forces continue their assault on the remaining Ukrainian soldiers still hold up underground in a steel plant in the port city of Mariupol. Jay Gray reports from Ukraine. Look, the most intense fighting continues to be to the east and west along the coast. Uh, Russia, obviously, as a part of their war plan, trying to take control of that region. A and the fighting has been very intense. We've talked about Odessa and the shelling there. And, of course, Mariupol, where there continue to be soldiers holed up in a steel plant there and, and doing the best they can to protect that region. It's their one last standing point there. There have been ongoing negotiations to get some of the wounded soldiers out of that plan and to much needed medical assistance. Now Turkey has been involved in all of this, saying that they've brought a ship and that they can offload these injured soldiers on, get them medical attention and take them back to Turkey where they'll stay, they say, until the end of the fighting. So they won't be a threat to come back and fight against Russia. Russia has said that's not going to work either. Let's talk a little bit about the first trial since this war began on war crimes. A Russian soldier arrested in Ukraine for shooting, they say, a 62-year-old man on a bicycle. Uh, he, they say, has admitted to this crime. Today he had a preliminary hearing, said that he was ordered by superiors to fire on the 62-year-old civilian. Uh, the trial will start in five days. He could face 10 to 15 years if he is found guilty. Again, the fighting remains intense to the east and is expected to be that way uh, for the long term. Uh, a lot of analysts also believing uh, that at some point that battlefield is going to expand. That's the latest right now from here in Lviv. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. All right, Jay, thank you. So to come here at noon, Elon Musk pumps the brakes on his mega deal to buy Twitter. Find out why the world's richest man says that deal is on hold. But first, massive shortages of baby formula have caused headaches for parents. We've got the latest on what's being done to address the shortage when we come back.